Hello and welcome to Over the Hill Outdoors. There are dozens and dozens of really good YouTube videos out there on how to make a bow drill fire. Hopefully this one will add to that wealth of information. I've made it primarily for those who might be trying the bow drill method for the first time and I'll be focusing on materials and techniques that, at least based on my experience, can make the difference between success and failure. Anyone who's tried it knows that the bow drill method can be extremely frustrating and physically demanding. You don't want to have to make very many attempts in a row because each time you do, um, you have less strength for the next try and your resource supply is being used up. So my advice is pay attention to detail, get your setup as ideal as possible before you begin. Now I'm going to divide this video into two parts. In the first, I'll talk about materials and in the second, I'll cover technique. So let's begin with materials. I live in the western United States and so I'm most familiar with the plant materials of this region. But regardless of where you live and what plant materials you have available, the most important factor, the key factor, is dryness. Your wood needs to be dry, dry, dry. Also temperature makes a difference and so does humidity. The colder it is and the more humid it is, the more difficult it's going to be. For beginners, I encourage them to put their wood pieces in an oven for about 30 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit as a confidence builder. If you start out with hot, dry wood uh, and you still can't get a bow drill fire going, then you're obviously doing something wrong and need to, to reconsider your, your technique. But what I'm using today is not heated. It's been kept outdoors. It's here. It's late February. It's in the upper 30s today. It's windy. Uh, so these are not ideal conditions, but as you'll see, it still can be done. Another important factor with regard to the wood is that you want to use non-resinous wood, or wood from plants that don't have pine gum or sap in them. So no pine, no spruce, no fir. Um, I, I've used them, and it can be done, but it's just much more difficult. Also, the hardness of the wood is important. Not too hard, not too soft. Here in the West, I prefer aspen, cottonwood, willow, sagebrush, elderberry. Elderberry is actually one of my favorite, at least for the drill. Um, and there are others that will work. But you'll just have to experiment with the woods of your area to find those that are just right for you. Next, let's talk about the fireboard. Some people call it the baseboard, um, including the drill hole or the depression that you'll form in that board and also the notch. The fireboard itself, uh, size is not critical. It doesn't need to be as large as the one shown here. It could be just a one inch diameter stick that you've shaved off on one side or two. But the, the key is, or the keys are, that, that this fireboard be flat on one side, flat on the bottom. And I like to flatten them on the top too, about a half an inch thick. And then long enough so that you can hold it firmly on the ground with your foot. The depression, or the the what I call the drill hole, you start that out by, by etching a circle in the top of the fireboard. Just the outline of a circle using the point of your knife. You want it to be about a half inch in diameter, about the drill diameter. And you want to leave about an eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch between the edge of that circle and the edge of the fireboard. Then you chip out the wood fragments from inside that circle and create a shallow depression. And next step then is to take your, your drill and your bow and uh, drill out that hole a little bit to smooth it out, to deepen it, and scorch it with the drill. Next step is to, is to cut the notch. The notch, uh, I envision it as a, an eighth of a slice of a pie taken out of that circle. If you cut it too wide, uh, the drill will pop out when you're using it, and if you cut it too narrow, then the char dust will hang up and not fall down properly. Um, I will cut this notch, the tip of the notch, as close to the center of the depression or the drill hole as possible, but without actually getting there. I mean, we're talking just a fraction of a, of a millimeter, if I can do it, to keep, uh, uh, short of the center of the drill hole. Um, the center of the notch, or the point of the notch, I will normally square it off, not keep it pointed, I like it to be about a millimeter to two millimeters wide at the center. And then on the underside of the notch, uh, beneath the drill hole, 
I will sometimes uh, carve out a cone, kind of like the bottom end of, a, of an hourglass, uh, a place for the char dust to collect and form into a, an actual cone. I've already made mention of the drill, but just a little more detail on what I'm looking for in a good drill. I want it to be straight, of course, with as few knots as possible. I'd like it to be about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch in diameter and about eight to ten inches long. If it's much longer than that, it gets wobbly when you're, when you're using the bow. If it's too short, then there's no room for the string to wander up and down on it, which is going to happen. If it wanders too close to either end, it's going to cause the drill to pop out of the string, so you don't want it to, to, to wander too much. Um, you also would like to have the drill uh, rough on the outside, have a textured surface on the drill so the string uh, grips it a little bit better. The drill should be rounded on the bottom, and, and by the way, you need to re-round that end after each attempt to remove any hard glaze that might form. Um, and then on the top end of the drill, you want minimal surface area. And you accomplish this by, by whittling down that, that top end uh, to minimize the surface area that's going to be in contact with your, your socket and uh, also lubricate the top. You don't want any smoke to form at the top of the drill. You want it all to form at the bottom end. <clears throat> in terms of lubrication, don't use water. Don't use sap. Water in particular will create steam, which causes the wood to swell, and then it's going to bind the drill in the, in the socket. Things like wax, uh, you might have with you chapstick, uh, bar of soap, uh, animal fat, oil from your skin, oil from your hair. Any of those will work to lubricate the, the drill top. Um, my favorite drill is a pithy elderberry branch. One of the problems with that is you can't carve the top uh, to a, a fine point because it's a pithy hollow stem. So uh, what I do is I modify it by inserting a, uh, a piece of wood in the top of that um, elderberry branch, kind of either dig out some of the pith or, or, or compress it, push that wood in there, and then sharpen that wood to a point. It works well. And then you have to reinforce the, the elderberry, the top of the elderberry branch, by wrapping it with uh, some kind of string so that it doesn't uh, split out. <clears throat> but anyway, the elderberry works really, really well as a drill. Uh, talk next about the string. You need something that's strong, especially when it's heated. You don't want it to melt. Um, paracord oftentimes will melt if it gets too hot. Leather is my, my material choice. Uh, but I've used a variety of other things, including the paracord, uh, shoelaces, sinew cordage, uh, nettle cordage, stinging nettle cordage, or other plant fiber cordage that I've made. Um, whatever you use, generally what you want to do is either twist or roll it, especially leather, to make the cordage uh, round in cross-section. That way it grips the drill better. Also realize that your string is going to, going to stretch with each use, so you should retighten it after each attempt, or it's going to get too loose and it's going to slip on the, on the drill. Another component is the ember catcher. It's any flat, dry, removable surface platform that you can place beneath the notch to catch the char dust pile that eventually will contain the ember, and then to transfer that ember over to your tinder bundle. It can be a wood chip, a dry leaf, a flat rock, whatever small object you have available. The next component of your bow drill set is the socket, the hand socket. It's just a hard material. Uh, I prefer, some say, say, maple or a stone if I can find one that has a little hole in it. Uh, something that fits in the palm of my hand. And then, uh, just as you lubricate the upper end of the drill, you also should lubricate the hole in this socket. Just a note of caution, uh, don't get any lubricant either on the bottom end of the drill or in the drill hole. Now the last element is the bow itself. I look for a, a branch that's about oh, a foot and a half to two feet long, a half to three quarters of an inch thick, and moderately flexible. 
It would be nice if it had a natural curve to it, although that's not critical. I look for something with a fork at one end, or else I'll cut a couple of notches in at either end of the bow so that I have something to secure the string into tighter. And then tie the string so that you have enough tension to spin the drill without it slipping. If you get the string too tight, then what happens is uh, it binds up too tight on the drill and it's hard to spin the drill and it also makes the string break sooner. How tight, how loose, that's something that you just have to figure out from experience, trial and error. So there you have it. A few tips on how I prepare a bow drill setup. Hopefully there was an idea or two in there that might have been either new to you or that you haven't tried before and that you'll find helpful the next time you try this ancient method of making fire. I look at learning to make fire with a bow drill much like learning to ride a bike. At first it seems nearly impossible, but with enough practice, eventually everything comes together and finally it clicks. Be sure to check out our now part two of this video for some additional ideas on techniques. Techniques that have worked for me and that I think might also improve your chances of success. There's always something new to learn no matter how many times you've tried this. So don't give up. If you don't get it the first time or two, just keep trying, and good luck.